Okay, video number six in the How to Wire Schneider PLC series. We are dealing with the Modicon M221. And today we're going to be taking a look at sourcing inputs when we're using a transistor model of the Schneider Modicon. Before we begin the video, we do have a massive caution that we want to go and put out here. Sourcing inputs can create danger from unwanted PLC triggering during a fault. Not during normal operation, but during a fault if the DC supply is grounded on the negative. There is some danger that can be created. It is danger that only is present during a fault, but if it is critical, uh, you don't want to you know, expose yourself to that or your customer or your installation. So if you have more questions about why a sourcing input is dangerous, watch video two in this series to go and understand a full rundown on syncing and sourcing. Okay, let's look at part numbers. What we are gonna be working with today are gonna to be any TM221s that end in a T or a U, which are going to be my transistor driven style of modicons. The rest of the letters and numbers inside of there don't make much of a difference. Where we have these orange letters over here is gonna be C, M, C, E, or M, E, which is gonna be for my monolithic or my cartridge styles. Also with the E for an ethernet if that's enabled. And then the number of total IO points, which is gonna be 16, 24, or 40. Once again, irrelevant to what we're looking at, we're looking for these ones. If yours ends with an R, this is the wrong type of PLC for this video. There's a previous set of videos that do cover how to go and wire those ones, which are the relay style. What we're going to begin with over here is we are going to go and start with looking at our manufacturer's data sheet. The manufacturer's data sheet shows, in order to save a little bit of space, they decided that they would draw two sets of batteries onto the same drawing, and that can be a little bit confusing to go and follow through. They're just trying to demonstrate two things at once. What we are working with is sourcing wiring, and sourcing is where we have got the positive connected to the common. So if we trace that path that they have over there, we see that they've got the positive connected through circuit protection, a fuse over here, to the common input, and then that they're using the negative as the stinger that's going around to all the rest of the field devices, and that is then going to go and switch through into my PLC, forming that complete circuit. Do note that they do show this fuse on here. They're asking once again for that type T, which is gonna be a really extremely fast acting style of fuse, can be hard to go and source as long as you've got some sort of fuse in there that's better than nothing. Uh, my suggestion is probably the CC or the small glasses, which you can also get an extremely fast acting. The last set of thing we're gonna look at over here is that we do have fast inputs. These are gonna be inputs that are gonna be able to go and operate at up to 100 kilohertz. So we'll use them for high speed counters on shaft encoders or on things such as a uh, remote control input, we can pulse the infrared in, et cetera. We can place those only on input zero and one or inputs six and seven. I will do one of those inside of this video as well. The very last thing that we have over here is these NCs. We do need to go and highlight what they stand for. They stand for no connection. This is not short form for normally closed. This is no connection, meaning there should be no wires brought into these terminals over here. Let's take a look at the electrical characteristics of these inputs. These inputs don't take very much power, seven milliamps at the top. So not a lot of draw on your DC power supply. They do take 24 volts DC as their nominal value. And that 24 volts DC has got a good range and a bad range for both high and low inputs. If you take a look, here's 24, here's zero. This over here tells me that for me to have a high, I need to have a voltage that is going to be 15 volts or more. And that's going to be give me a guaranteed high or a one. If I have got a voltage uh, that is below five volts, here's five volts, then it's going to give me a guaranteed zero, which means that we do have this area right in between that's ambiguous. We refer to this as the undefined range. Uh, it's not that the uh, outputs are that this thing doesn't trigger in the undefined range. It's just that Schneider refuses to guarantee what is going to go and happen in that undefined range. It could trigger high, it could trigger low. You bring a 12 volt input into there. Nobody's going to be able to tell you exactly what it is going to do on any given day. So if it is rated for 24 volts, just use proper 24 volts instead of, you know, fooling around with wrong styles of voltages. Stay out of that range. All right, let's take a look at our hardware now. Over here, we have got hardware set up. We've got AC that's being brought in. We're running that through a set of DIN rail breakers into a DC power supply. So we're converting from the AC to the DC. We see we're feeding out with that and we're taking a hot line through a fuse holder to go and power up my 
PLC that I have. This is that T style PLC that we were talking about before. So this has now been properly powered. That's all covered in video number one. What we are going to do now is we're going to start by creating a sourcing set of inputs. And the way that sourcing inputs are created is we take a positive and we want the positive to, oops, sorry, I drew that one the wrong way. Let me just draw that right from the beginning. We want the positive to eventually terminate into the common over there, but we always want this thing to go and happen through a fuse holder. So we take it in through here, we fuse it down. We got our uh, DFCC fuse holder. We're gonna go and stick in some of those HCLR fuses, and then we're going to go and take my positive in like that. And if you follow that through, we've now got positive applied into there, which means that we can now go and take our negative from our power supply, and we're gonna go and take that negative around to my individual components. I'm gonna drop off a stinger at each of my push buttons. And then we're also gonna go and drop one off at this device. It's a three wire sensor over here. If you're unfamiliar with European wiring, brown is going to go and be the positive, blue is going to be the negative, and black is going to go and be the signal for these ones. So since we're taking in our negative right now, we're gonna be taking that thing to the blue line right over there. Perfect. No more than two wires under terminals, standard case for, you know, most of controls. All right, now we're going to go and take in our signals back from each one of these. We can go and run a signal in. So I can take this one now into my I0. This one can go and run into my I1. This signal over here, if it's being used for a high speed counter, is going to have to go into I6 or I7. So we'll take it right there into I6. And we do still need to finish powering up this sensor. It has got its own small set of electronics inside of it that does need to be powered up. So we will go and take a positive from here and we will take that thing down. We'll junction it underneath this screw over here. The sensor type that we use is also going to be key because what we are ultimately doing, if I follow any of the rest of these along, is that I'm taking a negative and switching that into the PLC. I want to follow that with my sensors over here as well, which means I'm looking for it N P N. And the very first letter on that one, the N over there, gives you a clue as to what it what it puts out, which is going to be a negative value of voltage. So this one will, if I trace my path of current through, I've got my negative being brought thin, it's going to get switched through there and the negative comes out onto there. Perfect. This one is set up. Uh, last thing you can do is just double check and make sure that you have got your complete path for power running all the way through. We see we've got positive being brought in. We see that we have got a negative being taken in through here. And if I take a look, I can complete that circuit through my electronics inside of here. A properly wired sourcing style. Now, once again, as we said before, there is danger with this type, particularly when we have got a grounded down. If my DC power supply were to be grounded down like that, there's a danger. Watch video two. That'll get explained to you. Let's take a look at our other style of transistor driven PLC. This is going to be one that is going to be a T, but it's going to be an ME, a monolithic style that we are going to go and have. So slightly different body doesn't have the same cartridge inputs as what the previous one did. Other than that, everything so far on here is the exact same. We've got our AC being brought in, brought into a DC power supply, that DC power supply, we then fuse through that, and we provide power to the actual PLC unit itself. Let's go and do ours the way that we said we were before. We're dealing with a sourcing style. So we're gonna go and take a positive to common. We do that, we take it through our fuse holder. And then from there, we are then able to go and run it over to, uh, why don't I draw that line just like that. It's a little bit clearer. We'll drop it into my common. And these commons are internally junctioned. If I zoom in over there, we see that this thing is gonna be common zero, common zero. I don't need a junction from one to the other. However, if I feel better about it, absolutely, I can go and make a little short jumper like that. Up to you. Let's carry, uh, well, actually, let's finish uh, distributing our positive. While we're on the subject of the positive over here, we still have one more place to bring them. That would be to my sensor itself. So we'll bring that one all the way up over there. Let's distribute our negative around. Our negative is what we're switching through for us to be doing sourcing type of input. So we're gonna take a negative into here, into here, and then we're going to go and take it to our sensor over here as well. So now the sensor is powered up and it is going to be one of those NPN styles of sensors that we have. 
Last things that we're going to do is we are now going to go and bring in our signals. So we'll take this one here. We'll select a fast input if we're using it as a fast input, which would be like I6 or I7 or I1 or I0. We'll take it to I6 over here. These ones over here, we can just take to the next available inputs that we have. We'll take that one to I0 and we'll take this one over to I1. And there we have it. Now we have got a completely wired sourcing style of transistor PLC. Once again, danger that is going to go and be present in this one if this DC power supply were to go and have the negative grounded, whether internally or externally. Okay, that's that.